now let's see what effect will be on the cml and the sml if any of the assumptions related to the capm are relaxed we know that the capm assumes borrowing and lending at the same risk free rate but in real world we see it is impossible to lend and borrow at the same risk free rate so we see two different lines going to the markowitz efficient frontier the first line risk free rate f that is r f r f shows investment opportunities that combining the risk free assets and the portfolio f on markowitz efficient frontier now it is impossible to extend this line without further borrowing at rfr or the risk free rate to acquire further units of f at the same level of riskiness so in order to get more uh, units of f we need to have borrowed some amount at the rate of rb in order to invest in portfolio k so that we can extend our cml along the line segment kg this means that now cml is made up of rfr k and g that is it is a line segment of r f r f and we have now a curved segment which is r f uh, which is f k and another line segment that is k g and that k g is possible to the additional borrowing at the r b so we see that as we have the slope of the borrowing line k g lesser than the uh, slope of r f r f so in this case the investor is at the uh, loss means his net return is the loss because the slope of kg is lower than the slope of rf r rf rf the assumption to to relax the uh, risk free rate means we have a zero beta model in this case if portfolio m is a mean variance efficient portfolio uh, that is an alternative model by black which does not require a risk free asset in this case within the asset of feasible alternative portfolios many exist where returns can completely uncorrelated with the market portfolio in this case the beta of these portfolios with, with the portfolio m is zero so zero beta portfolio does not have any systematic risk however it may have some unsystematic risk the availability of zero beta portfolio will not affect the cml but it will allow the construction of a linear cml as we can see this line in the diagram a zero beta capm model can also be presented like the regular capm model in this model we have an equation where expected return on security i is equal to the expected return on a zero beta this is the zero rate of return and it replaces the risk free rate in replacement of rf r we use the term rz so we see that zero beta model uh, generally does not require any risk free asset the capm model also assumes no transaction cost but if we assume that there exist some transaction cost then the investor will buy as the capm assume no transaction cost so investor will buy or sell any mispriced security until they plot them on the security market line but if there exist any transaction cost the investor will not try to correct the mispricing because in this case the cost of buying and selling the missed price security may exceed any potential excess return which will uh, investors return into loss so the securities will plot very close to the sml as we can see in the in the diagram securities are plotting along side this thick line at a interval with the transaction cost sml will be a band of securities rather than a straight line so we see that we have a band between these two lines above the sml and below the sml this means that the width of this band is basically a function of the amount of the transaction cost heterogeneous expectations and the planning periods investors with different expectations about risk and the 
uh, expected return would definitely have a unique CML and SML on on individual basis. We know that CAPM is a one period model, so corresponding to the planning period for every individual investor. A one year planning period, the CAPML, the CML, and the SML would also differ for someone with a one month planning period so if we have an expectation differentiation uh, difference and the timing difference the cml and sml will also be differing for individual investors taxes capm assumes no taxation but in real corporate world taxes are there it means that the expected return in the CAPM are pre-tax return as we have seen earlier in the model whereas the actual return for most of the investors are after tax. If we see this model, this model provides the returns after the deduction of capital gain tax which is levied on the capital gain or the price appreciation and in the other part of the equation we see a tax on the dividend. So we are taxing two items for the return the first tax is on the capital gain that is the price appreciation and the second tax is on the dividend receipt tax rates differ between individuals and uh, in, uh, and corporations or the institutions for institutions that do not pay taxes the pre-tax uh, model is correctly specified because their pre-tax and after-tax gains are the same in this way we can say that tax rates can cause major difference in the CML and the SML uh, among the investors whether they are individual investors or the institutional investors.